Hello everyone, uh, this is Mansi Kulkarni and uh, thank you for joining us for a talk today. We are going to talk about Windows monitoring in Kubernetes environments and I have my co-presenter Kanika Rana with me. Uh, both of us are from Red Hat, we are software engineers at Red Hat. Uh, you can find us on our LinkedIn socials if you want to connect with us. So with that, let's move on to our introduction. Uh, so we were hoping that you could go over the abstract, uh, but if not, that's okay too because it's up here and we are going to talk about it anyways. Uh, so we are going to cover the challenges of monitoring Windows nodes in Kubernetes with the limited stack support and how we can overcome it. Uh, so we are also going to discuss the recent addition of Windows host process containers and we'll see how that eases the process to monitor Windows nodes. We will also discuss what they are and how they help us to achieve our goal of monitoring Windows nodes and we will also display a dashboard of some important metrics using a community dashboard. Uh, to keep things interesting, we'll also deploy a container metric app and that will be part of our demo. So let's cover the important question, why Windows containers? So as you may know that many enterprise applications have been built for Windows OSs, especially those using .NET applications and other Windows specific APIs. So Windows containers allow to run these applications in a containerized manner without needing a complete rewrite for Linux. However, a key point to note here is that Windows containers are tightly coupled with their OS versions. So a container built on Windows Server 2019 can only be run on a Windows Server 2019 host. In the Kubernetes world, that means uh, we need Windows nodes to run Windows containers. So let's quickly cover how you can bring up your Windows nodes. Uh, so if you're using a vanilla Kubernetes cluster, there are some options which you can use to join your Windows instances as Windows nodes to the cluster. Uh, the first one we have mentioned is CAPC. Uh, there are some SIG Windows guides that you can refer to uh, for bringing up a cluster with CAPC, which is a cluster API provider for Azure. Uh, the second one is using QBDM, uh, which was a recent addition by FSIG Windows. And uh, with this, you can use the QBDM join command to join the Windows instance as a node to your cluster. There will be some pre-configuration step that will be done as part of the scripts that are run. So uh, there'll be a container deinstallation and also kubelet and kubeproxy uh, services that will be installed on the instance. And lastly, we do have Minikube. Uh, it isn't uh, officially supported uh, to run Windows containers on Minikube yet, but this is a prototype and a GitHub repository that you can follow, which will take you through the pre-configuration steps to get your cluster ready. And finally, all of these projects are open source and maintained by SIG Windows. So if you want to reach out to them, this is the uh, GitHub readme for the repository. And there is a Kubernetes Slack as well, where you can reach out for any questions. Lastly, I would like to mention if you want to use a, open, use a Kubernetes managed service, you can go with OpenShift, AKS, or EKS options, uh, but uh, you don't necessarily need to use them, uh, they will just ease your process of joining instances as Windows nodes to the cluster. So let's uh, come to the next topic by monitor and I'll call Kanika for that. Uh, thanks, Mansi. So why there are, why, uh, while there are numerous reasons as to why we want to monitor, there isn't enough time to cover them all. But uh, these are the three on uh, the, the top three, in my opinion, to make informed decisions, optimize performance and identify issues, and uh, strategically manage cost for infrastructure workflow. And these benefits remain same for Windows and Linux nodes. Next, what is Prometheus? Any guesses? 
Well, hint, it's only the second hosted project of CNCF after Kubernetes. Well, I know uh, um, most of you have already heard what Prometheus is, but still. Uh, it's an open source monitoring framework um, and a loading toolkit. But the more important question is why Prometheus, right? So it's open source. It's highly scalable. Uh, it has out-of-the-box monitoring capabilities for Kubernetes, and it can extend the monitoring scope to the observability scope using uh, with alerts and metrics. So let's see what a typical monitoring stack of Prometheus looks like. So this is the Prometheus architecture from uh, the official documentation. Um, so in the middle, we have the Prometheus server, which is the brain uh, of this platform. It is responsible for three things. The metrics retrieval, the data retrieval, to collect the metrics from various um, targets, which is what we call as scraping in the Prometheus world. Then we store those metrics into a time series database, which is the TSDB. And then the HTTP server is for us to access those metrics um, from the DB. How do we access this metrics? We said that we need the HTTP service, but how do we access it? Using PromQL, which is the query language for Prometheus. Now, what do we do once we can access the metrics? Analyze and visualize. So on the top, on the bottom, we have the visualization uh, part, and then top would be the analyze part. Visualization, so uh, Prom Prometheus Web UI um, is the inbuilt offering to view these metrics, but can be set up with any uh, visualization platform, the most common one would be Grafana, and you can use anything else as well, or your own uh, customized API clients. Uh, Alert Manager is where we would set up thresholds for these uh, monitorings, and um, when these thresholds are crossed, we can uh, push, alert, uh, push alerts. And uh, once those alerts are generated, those can be notified depending on the choice of the team. It can be pager duty, email, or what my team uses as Slack. So, uh, that's what is there. Well, now, going back to the left side of the diagram, which is the uh, how do we access those metrics, right? So we said that it is responsible for pulling metrics. It relies on something called exporters. Um, um, and like the, uh, first of all, discovering, right? So how do you identify what targets can be are to be scraped? We have uh, Prometheus configuration files, Prometheus rules. And um, so it can be like a static. Um, configuration or service discovery. Um, and uh, then we have something called exporters, which are agents which convert, uh, because uh, these metrics can be from, uh, these the, the metrics that we want to scrape from Prometheus can be from anywhere, from a server, from a node, from a service, from an application. So we need something to convert those metrics into a language, what Prometheus understands. That's what is called ex what is exporters. There is a long list of uh, exporters which are supported by Prometheus. But for what uh, Windows uses is called Windows exporter. Uh, OK, so that's the repo for. Yeah, that's the repo for um, Windows Exporter. It is a Prometheus exporter for capturing all Windows system related metrics. It collects all hardware and operating system metrics that are exposed. Uh, we can go over the collectors which are uh, enabled here. Uh, in here, you can see that there is a, OK, maybe. OK, maybe on the wrong page. Sorry about that. So yeah, this is the list of uh, the ex uh, metrics which are available in this collector. What is a collector? Collector is just uh, part of the exporter, which is a set of uh, metrics which is uh, available uh, as part of that collector. So there are, uh, you see this which is a flag, which is uh, some collectors are enabled by, by default. For Windows exporter, it is a CPU, logical disk, memory, net, OS, um, service, sorry, service and then system. And then uh, other interesting um, collectors are container and process, um, which can be enabled explicitly. Let's look at what the container one looks like. 
Okay, yeah. So uh, as I said, a collector is a set of metrics. So these are the metrics which are exposed um, as part of this collector. And it is uh, a prefix. So for Windows exporter, the prefix is Windows. And then collector co container is the prefix of this collector. So all the metrics as part of this collector would have the combined pre uh, prefix of Windows underscore container. Mm. Okay. Okay, I did not change that here. Service monitors. Then um, there's no difference in uh, the way we configure service monitor for Linux and Windows nodes. I would, however, like to, uh, apart from the way, apart from the label reconfiguration, which we have to do at times, but that is more a need of the hour, not a configuration. Um, Detail, uh, like, like not a configuration difference. Uh, I would however like to point out why we use service monitors. Um, we use service monitors, um, we know that uh, Prometheus uses configuration files to identify targets and where to scrape them from. And to avoid editing this configuration file, uh, which in effect requires the pod to restart, we can use service monitors to configure these um, services, uh, to configure which services to scrape. This is an example. Uh, this is the screenshot of the service monitor that we use in our demo. Uh, you can see that it has um, label selectors at the bottom, which is Windows Exporter. The name of this service monitor is also Windows uh, Exporter. And it expects the metrics to be available on the default uh, path, which is slash metrics. So not a lot of differences here. Visualizing uh, these metrics, we said um, Grafana. So we know Grafana is an open source platform to visualize these metrics. Uh, but let's uh, look over what are the advantages for Grafana, right? And the biggest one would be dashboards. While uh, Prometheus Web UI gives you the option to view these metrics, but it doesn't have the option of creating and configuring and storing dashboards, which in my opinion is a big advantage. Some people also say that Grafana has better visuals because, uh, and I would have to agree, uh, you can see that this is a much more uh, rich uh, UI uh, visual than what you would see on Prometheus web UI. Um, Grafana still uses uh, PromQL and it also offers distributed uh, storage. So you can use it with Loki so that you can better correlate your metrics and identify what uh, Loki is a storage for logs. And uh, so you can use uh, in combination with Grafana to figure out, like, you know, correlate your metrics and figure out where is the error and identify it faster. Um, Grafana also has some predefined dashboards, uh, so you can outsource the pain of creating dashboards. Uh, if it is like a common use case, you can just use predefined dashboards and um, eliminate the step, step of setting up the dashboard. And uh, we do use a predefined dashboard for Windows in the demo. Now, over to Mansi for going over what the metric, where the metrics are coming from. Okay, so we talked about all the metrics, but let's look at the source of the metrics. Uh, so for node metrics are uh, mostly collected at the kubelet level and they are entirely collected by the performance counters, which collect metrics every second. For Linux nodes, uh, we know that uh, the metrics come from kubelet for node and C advisor mostly for containers. However, for Windows, uh, it is a little different. It is going to be kubelet for nodes, but it will be mostly container runtime interface for containers. And uh, that could be container D or Docker, depending on the container runtime that you're using. And if you are interested in looking at the internals of how this is implemented in kubelet, we have linked some uh, build request here, which you can take a look at. Uh, I'll open one of them. So, and yeah. So this is something that I worked upon, and this was uh, for supporting the container stats from the container D contain container runtime interface. Um, so yeah, it has all the APIs that we are using and the differences of the metrics that are uh, different from Linux. So you can take a look at it if you're interested in the internals. And I would also like to mention that uh, the existing stat summary API, which is usually used to query Linux metrics, also works for Windows. So that comes in handy when we are trying to look at the node and container metrics. 
नेक्स्ट वी विल गो ओवर विंडोज होस्ट प्रोसेस कंटेनर्स एज वी वेंट ओवर दैट अटल बट इन इंट्रोडक्शन सो होस्ट प्रोसेस कंटेनर्स अलाउ यू टू रन वर्कलोड्स डायरेक्टली ऑन विंडोज होस्ट इन क्यूबिनिटीज दे फंक्शन लाइक रेगुलर प्रोसेस बट कैन एक्सेस द होस्ट नेटवर्क फाइल सिस्टम एंड स्टोरेज विद राइट यूजर प्रिविलेज विच यूजली अदर सर्विस डोंट ऑन विंडोज ड्यू टू सम restrictions for running privileged containers but uh, starting with kubernetes 131 host process containers are enabled by default so that makes our life easier uh, to deploy tools like windows exporter which can now be run as daemon sets on the nodes uh, instead of running them as windows services on the host uh, so yeah that we'll see in the demo how that simplifies everything Okay, let's go over the demo. okay this is the only uh, screen that's affected okay but uh, i was just going to show you an example of uh, windows host process container uh, deployment uh, <laughs> process is new it has so many issues <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, yeah uh, this uses a windows image which is a windows exporter image as you can see here and uh, we also have an option of uh, selecting the args uh, through the collectors uh, so these are all the collectors that you can enable you can also add container over here and the important bit here is that in the spec we mentioned the security context which is the uh, windows option host process true that enables us to uh, run this as a host process container um, yeah so this is the deployment and we will take a look at okay you want to like disconnect okay yeah no? you want to disconnect the thing yeah okay so okay so we have a list of uh, nodes over here uh we can see that uh, there is a node which is using we see if i can point to it okay yeah okay i'll try to reconnect okay let's hope it stays the same uh, so what i wanted to point out here is we have a windows node up here which is using the container d container runtime and it is using the windows server 2022 data center image which is the os image that we are using uh, so this uh, node has been prepped already and it has kubelet kube proxy installed kube proxy for uh, network communication outside the cluster and uh, we also have the windows exporter running on this so we'll be able to export our metrics uh, through the windows exporter uh, now we will uh, take a look at uh, the prometheus operator so we are using prometheus operator to deploy the uh, prometheus related pods okay so you can see that the prometheus kubernetes service is running and uh, it is available on port 9091 um, yeah and we also have the prometheus operator deployment here okay uh, let's move on in our demo now um, Yeah. 
I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have uh, Grafana installed in this, so it's it installed in a namespace, uh, my Grafana. So we, it's a different namespace where we've already used a YAML file, uh, a basic uh, YAML file, which is available in the documentation. Nothing. We just had to, I think, add some security context. But yeah, so you can see that the pod service and deployment are all up and running. Yeah, and now we'll create a service account, Prometheus adapter for Grafana. And this is a, a repository that we have created for the purpose of this demo, so we can uh, share this. We are uh, going to create a role binding. we don't have it locally we can copy it Okay, that creates our role binding and then we need to create a token. in the routes or in the services? Uh, okay, we have the Prometheus route created here, which we are going to use. Okay, that looks good. So this just confirms that we can access the uh, metrics uh, from Prometheus before we go and add it into, before we go and add Prometheus as a data, so, um, data source in Grafana. Yeah, let's look at uh, how we can add a new data source to Grafana. Okay, this is taking some time to load. Is it just us? I'm not so sure. Let me reload. Okay, there we go. Let's add our Prometheus URL. I think it's going to be the same that we copied. Okay. 
right yep and i'm going to keep it simple it's a little difficult to work from here yeah uh, scroll down yeah just just below the dns skip there's a http setup yeah. okay yeah okay so we are going to put our authorization here and let's copy our token uh, that we created is a short lived token so we don't mind showing it on the screen yeah Okay, so let's see when test this. Okay, successfully queried the Prometheus API. Now let's go to the dashboards. Let's create our first dashboard. We want to import a dashboard. I think we have uh, the number of the dashboard that we need to use. It's 20763. This is a dashboard taken from the Kubernetes Mixin repository. Okay, and let's make sure we are using the right target here okay and that gives us uh, Grafana dashboard for viewing our metrics I would also like to show uh, the stats API that we discussed uh, Okay, I hope I have it somewhere. This is going to be the start CPI, but this is not the node that we are looking for. So let's uh, take our Windows node. Insert it here. Okay, and that gives us the summary stats of all the container metrics and the node metrics that we have. So you can see here these are the node metrics starting from here. Uh, you have all the low level metrics uh, for CPU, memory, network and then we also do have a container deployed so we should ideally see the container metrics but it seems that it may not be ready yet so we can uh, come back to it
but i'll move on to the next part now which is uh, addressing the question where is the gap so we touch a little bit on this in the introduction but let's deep dive uh, we know that many solution architects specialize in linux containerization and they are helping their organizations re-platform legacy linux applications however uh, these organizations also have many uh, windows applications uh, especially in the banking and in the government sectors uh, which are left behind during this modernization process uh, so uh, we want to bridge this gap um, data for windows monitoring on kubernetes is currently scarce which creates a gap in our ability to comprehensively monitor windows nodes uh, you might have noticed that even uh, windows exporter is not uh, officially uh, maintained exporter by prometheus it is maintained by the prometheus community uh, so uh, that's the uh, reason we need to uh, raise awareness and contribute more to this project. Uh, I would like also like to um, show an example of the gap here. So in, if you go to the Grafana website and you look at the sample uh, service monitor there, you will see all these uh, label uh, relabelings that are being done and they are being done because most of the uh, UIs uh, use Linux centric metrics, for example, the node CPU seconds total, which is a hard coded value for the Linux metrics. So uh, usually people try to relabel the uh, Windows metrics to the uh, Linux metric name so that they can be queried in the same console. But ideally we should be creating uh, a record uh, which we can use universally for windows and linux and uh, we can use prometheus rules for that uh, to create those records and then uh, adapt them to both linux and windows nodes so that uh, we don't have to keep adapting to the linux metrics um, and uh, yeah in conclusion i would like to say that windows applications are almost always an afterthought uh, but uh, we are happy that the sig windows community is working on improving it and we encourage you guys to contribute to their projects as well okay and i'll <laughs> pass on to kanika okay so i know you've been wanting to know this that will it will these monitoring of these nodes help us from this <laughs> No, not with just these metrics, but maybe, maybe if we have the right metrics and those metrics would be custom metrics, right? So we are the best place to make this happen. This is, of course, the Open Source Summit where somebody can pick it up and uh, soon we have some custom metrics to save us from just that. So we encourage people to work towards creating custom metrics and, and now that the gap is somewhat abridged, I hope you understand. Uh, you got something out of this talk and uh, we can go innovate and start some custom monitoring on Windows nodes. Um, and with that, uh, thank you. Uh, we're open for any questions. Um, and you can also always find us at the Red Hat booth. So opening the floor to any questions. Hello. Um, is there a possibility to count um, errors or situations based on um, policies based on? on on policies something uh, it, it goes down to the right system uh, and uh, I don't know some some administrator for some reason doesn't have the uh, needed rights for something to do in the whole ecosystem and that is based on a policy mm -hmm. and uh, is, is there a a possibility to break it down to what policy does he not have so that he cannot do what he just uh, wants to do and that causes an error and all what follows 
I lo- I I can say you want to say yeah sure uh, I think that depends on the collectors that you are using on the Windows exporter side so we went over the collectors a little bit you can take the take a look at the repository if there is a collector that does that already you can use that but if not uh, we can always raise an issue on that repository and maybe uh, yeah work on the I, I saw the ID collector I think that's got something to do uh, possibly with uh, group policies and stuff like that yeah probably we haven't used it but uh, Uh, yeah, I can take a look at it, and maybe you can uh, also um, talk about it later. And uh, I'll come up to you. Yeah, sure. And you can also uh, reach out to us on Kubernetes Slack. We are on Kubernetes Slack, so uh, you can also reach out to us on there. So, we'll another question. I'm just asking to pass the mic around. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we're on time. Yeah, we are on time. Okay, thanks everyone again for joining us today.